one similarity. We are all common in that because we have all gone through the blood. Hallelujah. Yeah, man. God has brought us to a place where, you know, we can, we, 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 we can all, we, we, we can all acknowledge and realize him. You know, we have hope, we have purpose. We see purpose in whatever we are doing or what we are going through. So we, 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 we can be encouraged. You know, we don't need to faint. We don't need to look to the left or look to the right and be carried away by whatever is going on even in this time. Hallelujah. Because we're, you know, we're created for one. In, in um, 1 Peter 2 and 9, it said, we're a chosen nation. We're a peculiar people. You know, we're being brought forth. Brought forth for his praise. Out of darkness, into this marvelous light. You know, so that is what we are. That is what we are for. So, you know, we just need to just sometimes just, just slow down, just stop and just, you know, realize ourselves. Because just don't be carried away, saints. Trust me. Just don't be carried away. Because it's going to get rough. It will be hard. You know, and I, 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 I encourage myself as I'm encouraging you because it's good for me. Because even encouraging you, if I, if sometimes when I feel, yeah, you know, I remember the encouragement that I encouraged someone, so it just forces me to go on. So that is what we are all here for, brothers, keeper. You know, if I was to follow flesh this man, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. I was, you know, because, but trust me, I owe too much unto God. Guy owed daddy too much. You know, he has came true for me so many times. So many times, God, and you know, we all can relate to that. We all can relate to that. You know, so just, just trust God in whatever we are going through, Saint, and, and be encouraged. Be encouraged because we have received the word. And we know when we get the word, man, the word, it coming with the test behind it, you know. Coming with this test behind it. So, you know, we, we'll go through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Saint. We just want to give God thanks this morning. And hallelujah, as we can see, um, we are with us our pastor in the house this morning. She hasn't been with us for some time. So we are thanking God for that. We are, we are thanking God for taking her through our travels and everything and brought her back to us now, which we are grateful of. And we do not think it would be even this morning to even sit and to listen to the word that um, God has brought through her this morning. And, you know, we hope you all be encouraged. I just want to say good morning to all you online viewers. Thank you for joining us another Sunday morning. We appreciate you and we preach us that God has led you to where you are now to be seen us or to listen to us this morning just to hear a word. Those that are on Roku, those that are on internet are different. Whatever medium he created for you to, um, to, to hear a word this morning, please don't take it for granted. You know, because he has purpose you this morning and I pray that whatever word you will be hearing today, it will minister, it, it will make you a different person. Hallelujah. It will make you a different person because the word that we bring forth is just the truth from our Bible, from the map that he has created, from the map that he, he has inspired the sons of God for us to use to guide us unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we know that wherever we're going, that this is a narrow path. We cannot do anything and enter into heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cannot do whatever the world and out there. We see them doing things and, you know, doing things that are not right. And we as sons of God, we have to be righteous in all our doing. Hallelujah. We've got to trust God. We've got to trust God to lead our path. Hallelujah. So be encouraged this morning. Can you stand please while we welcome our apostle this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. He's a good God, isn't he? He's a good God. Hallelujah. We welcome you to uh, Bible Teachers International this morning. Coming all the way from Kingston, Jamaica. I want to invite the online church, the television audience, Glory to God, and all of you here in the sanctuary. This is Sunday Morning Live. Come on. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is a good God, saints. He's a good God. I, I, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm glad to be saved. Hallelujah. I am glad to be saved. You know, the, the more the enemy does in your life, the more you should appreciate God. Hallelujah. Because the more the enemy does, the more you see the power of God in your own life. You would never know the power of God if you didn't have adversity. Amen. Hallelujah. But adversity come to prove who God is in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're excited. Bless the Lord. We're excited about 
amen, what God is doing in the ministry. I'm, I, I greet you from the states. I've been, glory to God, I've been around since I left here, saints. Glory to God. And we had an awesome meeting in California down in San Diego, amen, uh, on the Marine base. First time I've ever preached on a military base. But uh, it was just awesome. One of our pastors uh, retired from the Marines, Pastor Norris Wise, and um, they made him the pastor of the gospel church there on the base. Amen. And so, of course, <laughs> hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And you know, it's just a blessing because Michael and I both went, and as some of you may remember Norris. They just called him Snoopy. Yes. Praise the Lord. He was... Um, one of the members of the JMCs, Jesus Master Crew, which became MSOG. He, he and Michael were the, the uh, beginning. They were the founders of that group. And to have watched them grow up together, and now both of them are pastoring churches, that's awesome. Amen. Glory to God. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's what God can do. And that's why I tell you, don't give up on your children. Amen. No matter what they seem, may seem to be now, don't give up on them. Amen. Hang in there. Believe God. Believe God for them. We bless the Lord. Amen. I see Pastor Dale, you found her way back. Praise the Lord. And brought her husband back with her. <laughs> Brother Delion, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to BTI. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, are you blessed? Yes. Are you blessed? We've been inside of this particular study guide from Founders Week. We are one. Amen? And we're going to stay there. We are one with God. We are one with God. I want you to take your notes today inside of ch the chapter, The Mind of God. That's chapter 4. I want, you to, I want you to take your notes inside of that particular chapter. Amen? Uh, I want to further uh, this study. We really need to understand uh, s the, the mind of God because in doing so, we discover principles that never change. Principles and operations namely the operation of faith that will never change, the operation of God, the plan of salvation, redemption, these things will never change. Amen? They were in the mind of God before the world was. Hallelujah. I'm going to take my scripture, beginning scripture, from Ephesians, let's go there to the first chapter. And all of you scholars out there can move along with me and if you can think of a scripture that would enhance this teaching. All of you ministers, feel free to render it. Let's go to Ephesians 1. And this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. A church that was a Gentile, Gentile church. These people worshipped idol gods before they met God. And many of them had a primary god called Diana. And uh, Paul addressed all of these different gods they had. And they had one god, they didn't know who he was. They had a monument to him. Glory to God up on Mars Hill. Hello? The unknown God, Paul said, that's the one I came to talk to you about. That one. Praise the Lord. I want to start reading 
Well, I guess it's appropriate to start at the very first verse, Ephesians 1 and 1. Pastor Sam. Ephesians 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, mm -hmm. and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, okay. grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual things, spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, hold it right there. This particular verse many times is just read over, especially by those who uh, are advocates of the prosperity message, uh, the erroneous prosperity message, because when I say the prosperity message, saints, I don't intend to imply that God does not want us to be prosperous. Amen. God has no problem with us being prosperous in natural things as well as in our spiritual life. Amen? Amen. I'm talking about the, the message, the, the, the false doctrine of faith and prosperity, wherein uh, it points us to, to go after the things of the world. Are you working with me? Amen. When it, we won't find anywhere in New Covenant where God ever points us to the world or to ourselves. You won't find that in New Covenant. God will never point a man to the world or to himself. He told us to love not the world, nor the things of the world. But there's a message out there that points us to the world, to go get the house, go get the car, go get this, go get that. And in the name of the Lord, God is going to bless you with this. He's going to bless you. You're going to be the head, not the tail, and all of that stuff. Amen. These, these doctrines, this doctrine came, uh, the error that's in it is, uh, came from Deuteronomy 28, 29, glory to God, uh, the old covenant that we now, we find theologians bringing that covenant to the church. But the Bible says that covenant was done away with. Are you hearing God? Amen. Because Israel did not keep that covenant. And so God said, I've given you a new covenant with better promises. Come on, are you working with me? And these promises now are spiritual blessings. Our blessings are spiritual. Does that mean that God won't bless us in the natural? No. But it does mean that we don't pursue the things of this world. Are you working with me? And pursuit means your heart tied up in something. Are you working with me? Anything that your heart is tied up in, glory to God, he says wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Are you working with me? And if your heart is tied up in money and just make purely making money, glory to God, then that's, that's your treasure right there. Glory to God. That's, that's what you value. You value that more than you value your soul. And the scripture will be fulfilled what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and still and lose his soul? You know what's very sad is when you see people that have lived all their life, all their lives in pursuit of wealth and, and, and riches, glory to God, and now they're old. They're old. You look, up, you look at them and they're old. They're 70, 80 years old, and they're going to die in a few days. Hallelujah. How much longer are they going to live? And after after accumulating all that wealth, they can't take not one dime with them. Not one. And it will not buy them out of hell. They cannot use their wealth to escape hell. So then the scripture is fulfilled. What does it profit? What does it profit to spend all your life trying to get stuff? Hallelujah. Amen. That the scripture says is going to be destroyed. Anyway, and when you die, you've got to stand before the judgment seat of God. And see, this is something that people want to put out of their mind. Some of you want to put this out of your mind. But don't put it out your mind because if you do, that's deception. You're deceiving yourself. And I find that a lot of times the devil doesn't have to deceive us. We can deceive ourselves. Are you working with me? Glory to God. Because we want to put some things out of our mind. Glory to God. But God is saying to us, be mindful. Don't deceive yourself. Don't prefer to believe a lie rather than the truth. Are you working with me? Glory to God. So God doesn't mind us having things. Glory to God. We like nice things. Don't we like nice things? Everybody likes nice things. Glory to God. But if this gospel, let me tell you something. If this gospel is about things, 
if this, the gospel of Jesus Christ was just about getting things, then everybody in the church that is full of Christ would have a bunch of things. There would be no poor, no poor people in the church because the promises of God are yay. Hello. Glory to God. The promises of God are not iffy. If God promised a thing, he does it. He promised Israel wealth, and they got it. He says, as long as you obey me, you'll have it. Are you working with me? Glory to God. So if we don't have, if all of us are not wealthy and, and our, our storehouse is running over, then apparently God didn't promise it. Come on, are you working with me? Glory to God. But this scripture says he has blessed us with all spiritual blessing, and that's something that the church better wake up and listen to. Are you hearing me? We got to get our heads out of the sand and listen to what God is saying. It's time now to hear the voice of God, saints. Glory to God. We, you know, I, 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 was, I was looking over the, the, courses, for, the courses for BTTI, the uh, Bible uh, Teachers Theological Institute, and uh, that we, by, uh, by chance, uh, we're starting uh, January 13th. Classes begin January 13th for people that want to pursue their theological degrees. I was looking at the courses for that, and one of the courses um, that we have there is a course I taught. That it was actually the very first course that I taught in Bible teachers, the very first one. It was called the Tabernacle. Some of you remember that. Did any of you ever take the Tabernacle? Done that you never didn't have the Tabernacle? Well, you missed it. Because the tabernacle was the best course Dr. Banks has ever taught in her entire life. It's the best. It was the best. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. It was so good. And everybody that has ever taken that course, they want me to come back and teach it again. Especially with the increase that we have now. Because with the tabernacle, that was the course, that was the first course God ever told me to teach. And the reason being that when you study the tabernacle, you understand salvation. The tabernacle is God's blueprint for redemption. It's a type of redemption of the church. It, it, it depicts salvation more so than any other uh, shadow or type in the old covenant. It's, it's a tabernacle that Moses built in the wilderness. And, uh, but one of, the, one of the attributes of the tabernacle is that this building that was what? Um, this building that was 45 by 15, the, the building itself was only 45 feet long and 15 feet wide and 15 feet high. And uh, it was divided into two rooms, the holy, the holy place and the holy of holies. One, the first room was 30 by 15, 30 by 15 by 15, and the second room, which was the holy of holies, was 15 by 15 by 15. And so, so that's really small, right? That's... 15 by 15, that's no bigger than like right in this area here, right? That was the Holy of Holies. That's where the, the, the mercy seat sat and, 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 and the, um, remember your text. There were only two pieces of furniture in the Holy of, Holy of Holies. The mercy seat, <coughs> hallelujah, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> and the what? Ark of the Covenant. All right. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. How do you forget that on television? Praise you, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> All right. And so the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant sat on top of the mercy seat. But, the, but in, that, in that whole building, in that whole building, there were no windows in the entire building. Absolutely no windows. And, and it was so magnificent. I'm going to teach the tabernacle. I'm going to teach it. I'll probably teach it right here for the, for the new course. They want me to refresh the course. Amen. But the, the, the thing about it was that it was so brilliant because in, in each one of those rooms, the walls were panels 20 inches wide. The boards were 20 inches wide. And they were overlaid in gold. And so when you walked in, I mean, the tabernacle was very ugly from the outside, extremely ugly. But when you walked inside, it went, <gasps> because now you got all this gold, and then you got the table of showbread over here on my right. And then you've got over here, you have the candlestick of the seven, with the seven, the, the seven um, prongs on it. Amen. And, and back there, forward, 
you had the uh, incense, the altar of incense. And when you walked in there, that, and the priest, when he walked in, he was so, he, he, he carried a, an incense thing. You know, you, see, you guys do that here. I've see, I seen people do that in some of these churches here. They swing in this thing that has smoke coming out of it. Glory to God. And so can you imagine now being in a room where the ceiling is, is painted, uh, is embroidered with cherubs that's looking down at you. And they're red and blue. You got reds and blues. These are the only colors in there, red, blues, and white. Those are the only colors used in, in the tab in purple. The only colors used in the tabernacle. And, and you got this priest walking through this light over here that's lighting up that 30-foot room, that room that's 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. You've got this, you've got this light <coughs> that's lighting up this room. Why am I teaching tabernacle? <laughs> glory to God. What was my point? Anyway, glory to God. This, um, this, this candlestick is lighting up the room. It's casting a light in the room. And, with, and it's bounce, the light is bouncing off of the gold. And then you got the blues and the reds. And now you got a rainbow in there. And you, because you have the, the, the smoke, the smoke is, 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 is going up and, and, the, and the, 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 the light from the candlestick is reflecting, those colors are reflecting in the smoke. Are you hearing God? Had, it was a brilliant sight. It was a brilliant sight, and that was just in the holy place. Can you imagine what the Holy of Holies was, looked like? Hallelujah. But there were no windows, and there were no chairs. There was no chairs. And that, that, that was a type of the fact that the church is not a place for you to just come and sit. It's not a place for you to socialize. That's not what the church is. When the priests came in there, they went to the table of showbread. That's where they ate. But they stood up and ate. They stood up. They stood at the table. All of them would get around the table. They were always, there were always 12 loaves of bread on that table. And they would, sit, they would stand there and they would eat. And whatever, whatever else they ate, they ate it right there. Glory to God. And they, they had no chairs to sit and socialize and relax. Hello. Glory to God. You come to God's house to work. You come into the kingdom of God to work. You don't come in. You know, that is, you know, let me, let me just, let me just di ditto that right there. You know what Jesus said about that? Jesus said, if you come into the kingdom of God, every branch in him that does not bring forth fruit, he said, his father cut it off. So sit around here and don't bring forth for no fruit. Just sit around in God's house and can't look around and see anything you have done to further the kingdom. You have no fruit. What did you do with that salvation that you have? There's no one that you, you can't look around and see anyone that you brought in, anyone that you kept, that you encouraged to stay in, anyone that, 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 that you had anything to do in their lives. Nobody. Where's your fruit? Hello. And you can produce fruit not just as being, being an intercessor. You can pray people through. That's fruit. Are you, hearing, are you hearing God? Amen. And so there were no chairs there, but there were no windows. And this, is, this, this was my point. That's what I was going to get. No, no windows, right? That's where I was going. Amen. No windows. Now, what does that mean? What does that signify? Why weren't there any windows? Because right now, Right now, it's, it's daylight. It's daylight, right? It's day, it's day outside. It's Sunday morning. It's daylight. Glory to God. And if we turn all the lights off in here, you could still see. Couldn't you? Amen. The reason you could still see is because there are windows down there. And even though you have these curtains in front of those windows, the sunlight is still peeping through. Isn't that right? Enough to light up the room where you can see. Are you working with me? Glory to God. So God is saying this. I don't want you to be able to see by any other light other than mine. Are, are you hearing God? I don't want any other light able or enabling you to see your way. 
I want you to see by my light and mine alone. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? And that's why there were no tabernacles. I, I'm, no, I'm sorry, no windows in the tabernacle. Glory to God. Because God does not want us following foreign light. We're supposed to follow the light of the word. The word of God gives us instruction. It gives us definition. It gives us explanation. It reveals God's heart, mind, intent, his purpose. He doesn't want us to get that from man, from any philosophy. Are you hearing God? He says, don't follow the vain philosophies of men. He knew that we were subject to. He said, don't follow after that. You follow the light that the word produces. And if it's not the word, don't follow it. Are you hearing God? Amen. So this scripture says God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places. Now listen to what he says. says That's why I want, you, I want you to see the mind of God here. He said he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We cannot just slide over that. Because there's an implication there. There's implications there. The, the, the natural man. What does a spiritual blessing mean to a natural man? A sinner. Someone that doesn't know God. When you tell him God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings, what? The sinner is looking for something tangible. When you talk to sinners about blessing, they're looking for something they can touch. Something that is of this world. How come in the new covenant we don't see all this preaching and teaching these apostles doing about natural things? How come when you leave the old covenant you don't hear anything about natural stuff? Find it in the new covenant. Find it. I challenge you. Find where God promised us a lot of stuff from this world. I look in the old covenant and I see God saying to the children of Israel. He says this to the children of Israel. I'll make your enemies your footstool. I'll, no. Um, your enemy will come at you one way and I'll send them out seven different ways. Remember that? Hallelujah. But I, I see in the new covenant that God said, love your enemy. Love those that despitefully use you. He's not scattering them. He's keeping them right there. He's not causing them to flee. He's keeping them right there, right in your face. He says, you got an enemy? Love him. Stop praying for me to kill him. <laughs> Stop praying for me to get rid of him. If you got an enemy, I ordained him. Come on, are you hearing God? You got an enemy? I'm the one that looked at what it was he purposed to do in your life, and I approved it. You got an enemy? Guess what? He couldn't touch you if I didn't allow him. What for? Why? Why would he do that? Why would God let me, glory to God, I mean, if, 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 if someone came up against my children back in the day, before I met God, hallelujah, they'd have a real problem. Because they got to deal with mama bear. It don't matter what papa bear did, they can see got to deal with mama bear. <laughs> Amen. You, you, come on, ladies, y'all know what we're talking about. I don't know what daddy doing, but I know mama going to fight for those kids. Hallelujah. So if, 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 if they, if, it just seems natural that if someone wants to attack your child, are you going to say, okay, go ahead. Are you going to look, if someone say, well, actually I want to I go in there 
I want to go in there and um, I want to take this from your child and I want to take that from your child. And you say, okay, go ahead. How many parents would do that? So why does God do it? Why does God say, okay? The scripture tells us, tells us that the the scripture tells us that the same, uh, the story of Job is an example for the church. That's what the writer tells us. Hallelujah. Didn't tell us that. Glory to God. Well, if it is, then that means that the devil can't do anything that God has not already allowed. That God allows Satan to touch us. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Glory to God. I want to say welcome to Sunday Morning Live to our MTM audience. Come on, let's give God a praise for that. Amen. We are live on MTM, and we want to say welcome to Sunday Morning Live. This is Mary Banks, and you're here, glory to God, in Bible Teachers International. And we're in the middle of a study, and I'm going to get right back to it. Praise the Lord. God is not like us. He has a purpose and see, to you, when, when adversity comes, what does the scripture say? God has blessed us with all, what? Spiritual blessings, where? In where? Heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right? So to be in Christ is to be in a heavenly place. So now God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. How do I know? Okay, I know I'm saved. I know I have the Holy Spirit.